What's up, guys? This is my very first uh, ever podcast. Uh, don't have a name for it yet, but the title of this top of the of this segment is just gonna be the blood of Jesus. I'm with my two good friends, Omar and Fern. Uh, I'm Troy, and uh, just tell me something about yourselves, guys. Uh, something that that encourages people or something. Um, I guess a little bit about me. My name is Omar. Uh, Troy introduced me. Uh, I, we actually all go to the same church, and we've known each other for a good while. And I think I, I, I can say that I've seen um, each other grow. I've seen them grow in the Lord. I've seen Troy, Fernando, both, you know, growing in their, in their call that God has for their lives, as well as myself. And so uh, I'm really thankful for their, for their friendship and, you know, that we can have brothers in this, in this walk with Jesus. And so mm-hmm. these, are, these are one of them, some of them. Amen. Well, my name is Fernando. Um, uh, Sancho. Uh, so I've known Troy for a while. I met him back <laughs> in the day at our other church and youth c- camp. And so, uh, we made a, a great bond. So it's just, it's awesome and an honor to see him just where God is taking him, how God is using him in music and worship and, and preaching the word and sharing the gospel and just in every outlet that he can. So it, it's awesome to see. It's an honor to be here today and just share what, you know, whatever God wants to share with you guys. Amen. That's awesome, guys. Thank you Amen. for that. So we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, first question is, we're just going to get right down and dirty with this question. What does the cross symbolize to you after being transformed and being able to walk across the bridge that Christ has made? Um, so... Yeah, that's a good question. So the way I see it is that Jesus allowed us to come into a new life because of the blood, because of the sacrifice he did when we were undeserving. You know, we didn't, we didn't deserve that. We deserved hell. We didn't deserve uh, salvation. But Christ and God's mercy, the Father's mercy, sent his son to die for us. And now we're living uh, a new life, and we, we get to walk a new story, God's story, for, for, for our lives. And we are just a small portion of that bigger picture and that's something that we all need to learn how to surrender to knowing that it's not about us it's about Mm -hmm. god and his story so yeah Yeah. i like how you said it's not about us because i feel a lot of times uh church goers that aren't actually like giving their lives to christ they would just constantly be saying uh things like oh as long as i do this good and this good and this good but in reality if you're just focusing on just doing good, you're gonna cl- you're gonna be climbing a never-ending ladder. It's not gonna it's not gonna reach anything. Uh, it's it's only until you fully give up your life uh, to Christ for Christ for Christ's name and uh, just fully surrender and uh, not only Him being uh, your Savior but Him being your Lord over your life and um, just actually like fully surrendering, asking Him, okay, God, what is what are some things that are bothering, are like offending you? And once you ask that type of question, and he re- and he reveals it to you, and then you start doing what he asks, because we could all just ask, and we'd be like, oh, okay, like that's okay, like I don't I don't feel like giving that up, but thanks for like telling me, but I just don't feel like doing that right now. That's where pride pride could be a real issue, and uh, as for me, like that that was a big issue for me growing up, uh, struggling with pride, but. And uh, I know a lot of us still deal with it at times, but we are, we also have our friends to like keep us accountable and stuff like that. So, so rephrase the question again. Uh, what does the cross symbolize to you after being transformed and being able to walk across the bridge that Christ has made? I guess for me, what it stands for is for uh, the new life, a new beginning. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, he took us away from our sins of our past life, our old ways, our selfish ways uh, that only led to sin and death. And the cross assembles, uh, resembles life to me. And so, you know, being able to, knowing what Christ did on the cross, um, it just brings a new meaning to the whole, to everything, right? To life, because now it's, it's not us, but it's Christ that lives in us, mm-hmm. uh, why we do these things. And so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a new life. We're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? No, I would say this. It, I guess it reminds me of the parable that it, mm-hmm. uh, about the man that found the treasure in the field. So he ends up buying all the field you know, to, to keep that treasure. And I think that that is something that when we come to Christ, 
and we know how good God is, we we're able to let go of everything in the past, the old person, the old man, and say, hey, I don't need that. I'm going to invest everything to, to live this new life with, with Christ. And so I think that's something that we're all working for and wanting to, to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I just want to add, too, it's also the sacrifice that he paid for us, right? Because on the cross, he, he died for us, right? He shed his blood for us. And so it's also what it, what it is... Um, yeah, that it, it is a sacrifice. It is a surrender. It's laying down everything at his feet. And so it, it, there's a lot of meaning to it, a lot of resemblance or a lot of power behind it. And so, yeah. Yeah, and with the, the cross uh, comes grace also. Like you look at David in the Bible. He was a man after God's own heart, but still fell into adultery and murder. But it was because of the grace of God. Uh, and that was before even the cross. But now, if if that were to happen, um, which it still does happen to people, but if that happens, uh, God's grace is still there. It's the same yesterday. It's the same today and tomorrow also. He's the same yesterday, today, and, and forever. But can you just speak, say a little bit about, like, God's grace? What has God's grace actually done for for you? Just like how David got was redeemed by it in the Bible like you, I know both of y'all, y'all seek after God, but there are still trials that come into y'all's lives every, every once in a while. And uh, I just want to, how does, how does the grace of God actually, like, help you uh, fight through those circumstances? Yeah. I think one for me, like, the biggest thing was identity. You know, mm-hmm. having, uh, finding a new identity in Christ and letting go of the old one really helped me. And, but at the same time, it was a battle having to go from one identity to the other, like leaving the old man behind. But that was the biggest, I guess, one of the biggest things in my life that I'm grateful for that Christ did for me, that the blood did for me, was that I don't have to be that Omar that used to go to parties and get in mm-hmm. fights and drink alcohol and and try to find the next girl to, to be with or whatever, you know. And, and that was just a, a vicious cycle that I wanted to break out of or I, I knew – wasn't leading me yeah. to anything good but then Christ came out of nowhere and and he saved me you know he, he gave me a new chance he gave me an, a, a hope and uh, I'm forever grateful for that and so uh, yeah my life has you, you see an old, old old picture of Omar and now it's just like you can't even like it's crazy it's day and night hmm. wow and so so yeah I'm, I'm grateful for that yeah. I just had a uh, man God's grace uh, it's power it's I guess it's what Grace is what changes us, you know, knowing that we have that, that love um, from our old ways, that even when we were still sinners, he died on the cross, right? And so his grace is what's redeeming us, right? May we never take it for granted. But whenever we do fall, whenever we do slip, you know, um, we, can, we can know that we have his grace there to lift us up so that we don't fall in condemnation, you know? Um, so conviction is good. But the grace, it's what's going to continue to lift us up and know that, hey, man, I'm a child of God. Uh, thank you, God, for forgiving me. Thank you, God, for carrying me. And um, it's powerful. It's what makes us move forward, you know, whenever we, we might be down or thinking, you know, because we're not perfect. You know, we're mm-hmm. going to mess up. We might yell at somebody. We might um, say something we didn't want to say or do something we didn't want to do. And, you know, we get convicted. But, man, God's grace is like, okay, come, come get it right, right? Come do it right the next time. Come with me, son. And so um, it's, it's life-changing. Yeah. yeah. At the same time, that can be a good thing, but then some people don't understand it, and they take advantage of God, right? Mm-hmm. They take advantage of his goodness and his grace, and they want to test God's limits so much that, you know, they try to keep living in sin, and they come back to grace and sin and grace and sin, and that's, and that's not the, the real Christian life that God is calling us to live real mm-hmm. walk that he's wanting us to walk i don't know what do you guys think Amen. about that well i was gonna say it's always an issue of the heart and so if anybody wants it's in essence taking god's grace for granted then their heart posture is already in the wrong spot it's not in, in where it should be right no christian who knows what christ did on the cross for us should be taking his grace for granted right we we should uh, love what is uh, good, hate what is evil, right? Hate what is evil, love what is good. And so we, we want to please the Father. Um, it's, it's there for whenever we, you know, accidentally mess up or whatnot. 
But not when we, we, we take it and we're like, oh, well, I'm going to be forgiven. So let me continue. I'm able to do this and this because I'm going to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Then I would question, like, okay, your heart's not in the right place. You know, have you really made him your Lord and Savior? But that's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Yeah, especially with, like, today's society, it's so twisted. Like, you have all these, like, different things coming up, like, with the LGBTQ, with just, like, the presidency, like, and... Like kind of, kind of, kind of going back to what you said, it's all about like identity, uh, knowing who you are in Christ, and then like how you said it, the posture of the heart. A lot of people, their posture, they will say they believe in God, but they're not actually following His commandments, and so that's why we're in the state that we're in today in the world. Yeah. Yeah, and well, there's a scripture that I was I was thinking about right now. It was uh, the Bible says that. That uh, if when we fall back into sin, yes, repent and God will forgive you because the blood cleanses us. But also when we, like like Fernando said, you know, if our posture of our heart is incorrect and we're sinning more and coming back, sinning more, like we're just falling away. It's like we're crucifying Christ again. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. And that's that's something I don't want to do. You know, mm -hmm. he already went through it once. That's all we need. One sacrifice. The blood of Jesus was enough. You know, that's all we need. Mm -hmm. And so, but there is grace. If you do fall into sin, you know, sometimes it's it's unintentional or, you know, uh, as soon as it happens and you need to repent. Mm -hmm. That's really the, the answer there. And sometimes it's intentional. Mm -hmm. I know for me, uh, I was already established in Christ, but then once I graduated high school, kind of started like doing my own thing. And it was, I was very new what I was doing and I could hear the spirit saying like don't do this like there was one time just like paraphrasing it uh i was gonna serve that weekend but i was doing my own thing the the weekend before and when i got the text to oh saying like oh we need you to help out here i was in the middle of something and i was like okay well i will repent after that's literally what i said in my mind and uh that's just that that could be like anybody like and that was because that's because I was I was already following Christ for so long, but again the pride got in the way, and me wanting to do my own thing because I was seeing like other people doing it and I wanted to like experience it for myself. But in reality, what that brought was panic attacks, anxiety, and just all sorts of things that God was saying, "Look, if you go down this road, that's what's waiting you. But if you go this way, you're gonna find a better way, a better." better peace, better, like, just knowing who I am deeply. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen, amen. Yeah, and just going off of, like, seeing other people, like, because the blood is available for everybody, right? But how has Jesus, how has Jesus dying on the cross impacted this generation as a whole not specifically certain groups but as a whole Fernando, you want to go first that's a very it's a hard tough question well i think the question might be more um, in a sense who has accepted the blood of jesus hmm. you know in this generation because those that that in essence that are that are covered by the blood of Jesus, who have, who believe, who are the true believers, you know, then there's going to be change. But those that there aren't, you know, um, as we can see in the world, they're being blinded, right? Their hearts are being hardened. Um, uh, then it, it's going in a different direction, right? Because the, again, the world is always, uh, it's going in the opposite direction of what the spirit wants or what God wants. And so it's always a, a conflict. It's always a battle. And I think that's why, it's a daily thing to pick up the cross, kind of like what you were saying before, right? That like, even as a Christian, I know what is right, what is wrong, but if we're not feeding our spirit and we're into worldly things and whatnot, then yeah, we're gonna start drifting away and without noticing, and then eventually we're gonna end up on this spot when we were supposed to be over here. We're like, how did I get here, right? And it was just maybe one degree that you were drifting off, right? But you were feeding the, the flesh more and more and more, and we weren't picking up the cross or we weren't spending time with God, and so we were drifting away. And we, we have to be very, very careful not to have uh, our hearts hardened, right, or to be lured by the, the things of the world. And that's why 
um, it's important to know what the blood of Jesus did, what the cross stands for, and and make a commitment and 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 surrender to be like, okay, I need to let the Holy Spirit lead me, right? Um, not grieve the Holy Spirit. And so whenever He's um, asking you to do something, to be obedient or and to know, and just spending time, I think the the closer, like in any relationship, the more time you spend with Him uh, in, in that relationship, you get to know them better. You know what their desires are, what their wants are. And so I pray that, you know, that's our desires, that we want to know what the Father wants for us. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but. Uh, I, I was thinking of something right now. Like, so your question was, like, uh, how, how has the blood impacted this generation, mm-hmm. right? And I think when and I look at this generation, I see that a lot of kids or people, uh, you could say, like, looking at Gen Z or the younger people, they're, they're lacking identity big time. And so mm-hmm. w- what happens, the world right now is saying, uh, you know, uh, transgender and LGBT, and now Walmart or Target is uh, targeting kids. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of target on identity right now. And so, but what the blood of Jesus says is, hey, you are a treasure. You know, you are valued. Mm-hmm. You you are, you are, uh, you were picked, handpicked by the Father. And so when they when 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 this generation can look at that, how they can see their value. When they see the blood, they'll see their value. And then when they accept that, they'll be able to truly be transformed and changed. And so I think that's the only way. The blood of Jesus is really what can save. It's really the only way yeah. to see what we're worth and what God did for us. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah. I like how you hit on identity again because once we accept uh, Christ into our hearts, he labels us first a son, first a daughter. Uh, I was hearing the song uh, by Met by Love. It's a group. It's a band, uh, kind of like Circuit Riders. The, the lead singer uh, did Circuit Riders. And so he just got impacted to hitting colleges and doing all that stuff. So he started, he uh, formed the band, worship team. And they released that song, First the uh, First Son. And I was hearing it this week. And it's like, I'm not a performer. I'm not someone that's on stage. I'm not someone with a microphone. I'm not someone that does this or that. I'm first a son. Like, nothing else matters. Right. If I'm doing this for Christ, but I don't know my own identity, which is first a son, then what am I really doing? Um, and I feel like a lot of people in this generation also get it twisted with uh, what, it, what it means to be a Christian. Like they'll think, okay, since I'm a Christian, I will have the best life. Like, no, the Bible actually says he that actually promises hardship, right? Psalms 23 is probably my favorite verse. Uh, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff come from me. But what a lot of people like don't understand is when it says your rod and your staff, those tools are used by shepherds, right? God is our shepherd. Those tools are used for discipline, right? Uh, but why would a shepherd need to discipline us to to shape our character, to like mold us into the person he wants us to be, into the son he wants us to be? And uh He's not just going to discipline us, right? It's because there's going to be heartache. There's going to be times of trouble where we turn our, our backs from God. And when He when He's there for us, it really molds us into the son that or daughter that he really wants us to be. Yeah, I think you, if you can understand your identity in Christ, like if you know who you are, son and daughter, that you're God's masterpiece, mm-hmm. right? That you can stand in the times of troubles that when... The lies of the devil come like, oh, you're this or you're that. You don't fall into them because you know who you are in Christ. Yeah. And so that's why I think identity is so uh, important fact because when you don't know who you are in Christ, then you'll fall for whatever the world tells you. And that's what's going on in this generation. They're being told, they're, hey, you're this, hey, you're that, and you're this. And the parents and this and that. And so you see the, the trickle effect because they don't know their identity in Christ. But when you do, you can stand it through it all, being name called or this or that, you can uh, stand that persecution, but you know who you are. You're a son and daughter of the living God, right? And so um, you're covered by the blood of Jesus. And so Mm -hmm. that makes all the difference, I think, in this generation. Yeah. Um, What are, like, some questions that you think that people have about Christianity? Just like, because I know uh, some people are like, they will come to me, multiple people actually recently, uh, if I, they're going through something, it's like, so is God going to, like, take care of the other person? Like, because they did me wrong. 
So, like, the Bible does say vengeance is mine, but, like, how much vengeance do you, do you think, do we think God is going to display on someone else since there is grace? Because, like, David, like, Psalms, he's, like, saying, like, crush them under my feet and all this stuff, right? Vengeance is the Lord's. Like, he would do whatever he wants to them. But do you think that's more towards the, like, the end of life, like once you die and you meet, you're in the judgment throne room or whatever, do you think that's when the judgment or do you think he disciplines even like the non-believers to where like, okay, you want to, you messed with like my daughter, my son, like, and since I'm protecting her and since vengeance is mine, do you think God will do something right now? If that question kind of makes sense. Uh, kind of, kind of. I, I think that we as Christians, um, instead of desiring punishment on people, I think we first need, since we have been forgiven, that I think that we need to pray for people, um, right? Like if we look biblically, what does God ask us to do? It says to bless our enemies. So are, are we... Are we doing that? Are we praying for these people that are... Because we know that hurt people hurt people. So when somebody does something to you, it's because they're hurting. So if you truly understand that, then you're going to be praying for not being like, man, God, I want you to take care of them. I want you to do this to them. I need you to uh, destroy that or, or whatever it may be, right? God's vengeance is, and he'll handle it however he wishes. And so I think us as Christians, those that are in Christians that know like people are persecuting us, this and that is, man, I need to pray for them. Uh, they're, they're hurting. I might not understand why. I might not know why, but I need to pray for them instead of bashing them or expecting them to go down in, in hardship and this and that because the Lord knows how. The Lord is going to handle that aspect. The vengeance is his. If he wants to go harsh, he will. If he wants to go soft, he will. That's up to him. But I think us as, as Christians that we need to have a heart of forgiveness because just like you were talking about grace, God, when we accept this grace, it's like, man, I was a sinner. I was back there. You know, I was lost and I was doing all these things. I was using people. I was lying, cheating, manipulating. But now I'm, I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So are we giving that grace back? You know, and even in, in the Lord's prayer, it says, you know, forgive our debtors as we forgive our debtor. You know what I mean? So as, we, as we're forgiving people, you know, God, forgive us for ours because, again, we're never going to be perfect. We're going to fall short of his glory. And so... You know, we need that forgiveness. Are we giving that forgiveness back? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so. That's good. Yeah, I feel like if we don't give that forgiveness, then the person we're not forgiving has a big hold on us mentally, emotionally, and spiritually because we're, they're just, we're constantly just thinking about them. Oh, this, this, this. When they're not, probably not even thinking about you, they have that much a hold over your life when you don't forgive. Like, when you don't forgive, like, when you don't really forgive someone, the real prisoner isn't them. It's actually you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I always say, it, like, when you don't forgive somebody, it's like you're drinking poison and expecting somebody else to die. It's actually hurting your heart. And I think, remember, I always say that the, the, the heart of the problem is, is the heart, right? It's the root. It's everything in the heart. And that's usually, it. and it's seen scientific, like, even scientific it says that, you know, those people that have bitterness, anger, jealousy, hate, like that's what brings cancer to the heart or to the body and stuff like that because it's an issue of the heart. Yeah. And, and so I think that, yeah, we definitely need to learn to, to forgive others the way we've been forgiven mm -hmm. uh, and to show that love, to show that grace to others. And I think that's what impacts people. It's like, man, you're not trying to hurt me or do it. Like, who are you, right? Because that's what Jesus is. They were persecuting yeah. Jesus. And what did he say at, at the cross? He said, forgive them, for they do not know what, what they're doing, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, there was many times that Jesus uh, forgave, right? And uh, yeah, like Fernando said, all the way to the cross, he even forgave them who were persecuting him at the cross. You know, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Um, and then you look at the story, I think, when the Holy Spirit had already come and filled the believers, that uh, that couple forgot Ananias and Sapphira they lied to the Holy Spirit or to Peter mm. who was filled with the Holy Spirit and they got they got destroyed right there they got killed you know by the Spirit of I, I don't know they got you know so we have to be very careful in thinking that we can get away with things 
that we shouldn't be doing, especially when we know the Lord, especially when we're walking with Christ, especially as believers. There is a lot of exhortation that Peter and Paul did to the churches to, to other believers. Why? Because we need to, we're carrying something now. You know, we're carrying something valuable. We have to be, be very careful with how we carry that, you know, how we handle that. And we do it by God's grace. We're not doing it by our own merits, by our own efforts. We cannot do anything on our own. We do it by God's grace that's carrying us, his blood that mm -hmm. saved us. And so, but yeah, I would just say be, let's be very careful. If you're a believer listening uh, with what we carry, what we, what we have, how we're, how we're stewarding that. And even displaying it too because there's a lot of Christians now in the world who have platforms who are just throwing things away or making themselves look bad in the spiritual realm just to look good in the in reality here. And uh, sadly, that's just what's going on uh, in today's world. But just to, like, go back on love, on, like, the love of, of Jesus, like, if we don't forgive after we've been forgiven, like, what Jesus did on the cross, that type of love we can never, like, experience from any other thing. And just realizing that Every single day when we sin, it's essentially the same thing to when Judas kissed Jesus on the cheek, that same betrayal. But instead of Jesus saying, I'm done, I've had enough, get me down from this cross, send hundreds of thousands of angels, come down, just kill everybody, wipe them, I'm done, which he had every right to do that. But his love for us outgrew that, if that makes sense. And so the love of Jesus, the way we, us believers, experience that every single day, his grace, his mercy, which renews every morning, we have to be displaying that even to our enemies, to friends that betray us, uh, to our parents, to just anybody, really, everybody, anybody and everybody. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, and then we'll just close out with this last question. Uh, kind of same thing. How has the blood of Jesus impacted our relationship with God the Father? Well, to me, like, that's, uh, the blood of Jesus is everything, right? Um, it's what removes our sins. It's what sanctifies us. And so... Uh, it's changed my life, right? From from the old ways to the new, uh, from the old, he's made me to a new creation. He's made me into the image of, of Christ, right? And so, yeah, and you and you like my old ways of are, are he's shedding away everything from the old. He's made me into a new creation, and so mm -hmm. he's transformed my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And if, I I guess for me, what I would say is, uh, like uh, the blood of Jesus, you know. Uh, allowed me to have a relationship with God, you know. It, it really, that's the mm -hmm. the thing where, well, salvation is having a relationship with God, knowing God, and being known by God, you know. And, and so I think that that's uh, the biggest thing that for us in this generation is we need that relationship with God, you know. And it's, it's not about works. It's not about becoming a good person and trying to do good in life. It's more of uh, building that relationship with God, you know, allowing and being vulnerable and so the blood of Jesus allows us to, to walk into that kind of relationship where we can be vulnerable with God. We can um, give him our weaknesses. We can uh, show him anything that's fragile in us. While the world will maybe mock us for those things, God will actually, you know, strengthen us. And in our mm -hmm. weaknesses, he is strong, the Bible says. So, yeah. And I'm, I think that's the number one thing I'm grateful for, too. Mm -hmm. Another thing. Yeah. For the blood. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I've never personally been, I, I just kind of got this picture of like being stuck in a quicksand where you're just, once you step on it and you start singing, you can't get out, right? Unless someone else helps you or unless you know how to actually like get out, which a lot of people don't, the majority of people don't. But in this case, it's like us, we're dead in our sin, we're stuck in our sin. There isn't, there's not anything we could do, there's nothing around that we could grab onto to really pull ourselves out of that quicksand. But unless someone, comes and grabs our hand and pulls us out and helps us out which is jesus and and really bring us out and carry us back into the car which is the bridge and he, him driving us back to the house which is heaven and to the father 
that's kind of like the the image I got right now when you guys were talking. Just that's that's kind of how I view how the relationship with with God has uh, with how Jesus is uh, the Jesus on the cross impacted my relationship with God. That I was like anybody else. I was stuck. I was born into this world, stuck in sin uh, for so many years. I was just. Uh, struggling with the same thing, old patterns just keep coming up, coming up, coming up. And it wasn't really until I asked God, okay, I'm done. I need your help in this. Can you help me? And he said, my hand has been here, and I'm ready to pull you out. And so he pulled me out, and ever since then, I still struggle with some things, but he's always just leading me and guiding me. And when God, when we see God face-to-face or Jesus face-to-face, they're going to be seeing the blood on us they're not going to be seeing us they're going to be seeing jesus right and so anything else i just say treasure right treasure uh you put it above all that relationship right first seek matthew 6 33 first seek the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all else will be added and so that's taking care of that relationship you know, that's the priority, having that daily walk with him, that daily time with him, prayer, uh, reading the word, right? Letting God speak to you, letting God in, uh, the Holy Spirit guide you. I think that's the most important thing. And I know with life coming at us with so many things, we can we can lose our, our, our focus, right? But God is up there, and so if you stay focused on him, everything else will be added. And God's a good God. God loves you, and... Uh, I just, I love what what he's done, you know what I mean, for everything, you know, we don't, we, we're undeserving of anything, we don't deserve anything, but he's given us everything, in essence, right, with the blood of Jesus, and so, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. and just piggybacking off of that, seek first the kingdom, I feel like that's, that's something I'm really uh, learning in this season, uh, actually diving into the word, spending time with God, not just spend opening the word like, yes, you want to open the word every single day because that's your weapon. You want to sharpen that every day, but just even sitting down and, and just staying quiet, listening to what God is saying, just spending time with him. Right there, you're seeking the kingdom first. And once you're doing that, and now you're wondering, okay, what am I going to do in life? What is, what's my next thing, this and that? It's like you don't even have to worry about that because you're just being swayed by where the spirit is taking you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to share one, one scripture before we close here, which is like one of my favorites. It's Revelation uh, 12, 11. And I used to have it engraved on one of my Bibles, and then I gave it away. So it really, I guess, it impacted my life. But it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the de- to death to the death so i really think that when we when we re- when we surrender and rely on on the blood of jesus and what he already did then everything else just falls into place and a lot of times we just need to let go and let god you know and that's really it let the blood cleanse you let the blood lead you you know transform you the blood of jesus he already did the the hardest thing ever was removing sin from our lives and so let's just stay there you know keep walking mm-hmm. in that yeah it's powerful Yeah, well, if that's it, uh, I'd like to pray us out. Just bless every, anybody who's here in this podcast. Uh, just uh, open your hearts, uh, open your ears, and we could just close out in prayer. So, God, we just thank you for today, Father. We thank you for your grace and mercy that are that is new every single morning, Father. Father, we just ask that you would bless anybody who's listening to this podcast, whether it's on uh, YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, Father, whatever whatever uh, platform it is, Father, would you just bless them, Father? Would you reveal your son to them, Father? Would you bring fresh revelation of the cross and the blood of Jesus to them, Father? Would you reveal your love and grace in new ways to us, Father? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.